get it. Yes, sir. I just wanna be a lover. They calling me up. Thank God. Ask God. Repentance and trying to make up the hubby. Lucky that number seven. Yes, he would keep on turning. Work focus on the success. All the shit is resembling. Riding around with my team. That was for what we repping. All the left to the death. With it, I'll get to step with This is stopping ground. That plagiarism is simply not allowed. I'm from a city where it should be if you smoke aloud. And that cookie got the stiff. He better quiet down. All these loud doses in a quiet town Eating as a guy, you know Messiah with a vibe and crowd I'm shitting on these niggas and I'm acting Do you see me now? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Off The Bench My name is Jorge, aka The Latino Nerd And I welcome you to this podcast This sports podcast covering all New York sports And a little bit of wrestling in between I'd like to do a quick shout out to King Hez for providing the theme to this podcast, Legend, by King Hez. The link is in the description if you wish to download and listen for yourself. He is a great up-and-coming artist in the Westchester area. But let's get down to business. Knicks fans, I need you to, to relax. I know it's been, it's been a wild weekend, and I know we're, we're still suffering from the consequences of KD's decision. Let's, let's go over it one last time. So Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving signed with the Brooklyn Nets. In fact, they took less than the max to sign with Brooklyn to help shell out more money for their boy, DeAndre Jordan. Now, DeAndre Jordan signed a four-year, $40 million deal to sign with Brooklyn. So now. Experts are saying that Brooklyn now have a big three of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and DeAndre Jordan. Personally, I'm happy for Brooklyn as a Knicks fan because, quite frankly, the Knicks have not been good in the past two decades. Actually, ever since we entered this new millennium after the year 2000, the Knicks have not been good at all. Now, there have been conflicting reports saying that the Knicks were not willing to offer the max, but then people like Rick Buecher, Chris Broussard have been hearing that the Knicks actually did offer the max. So it's another free agency summer with big free agents out there on the market with the Knicks having cap space. It was the same, like it was a similar situation in 2010 with LeBron, 2014 when KD first became a free agent. And it's a running, a running theme with New York. Wherever there's a big name free agent, and the Knicks have cap space, they miss out. So who is to blame this time? In previous years, it would be easy to blame James Dolan, as James Dolan would always step in and want to offer a superstar X amount of dollars that wasn't the max, or would offer them something that they were just not interested in. So what's, what's going on here in New York? Now, Scott Perry and Steve Mills, are the front office of New York. And since ever since uh, James Dolan hired Phil Jackson and fired him, he's been, uh, James Dolan has been adamant on not getting involved with basketball operations. And it was very evident when he's hired Scott Perry and elevated Steve Mills to be the president that he said that, that he's going to let them do their job. And he's not going to interfere. And this isn't a situation where they report to him. No. This is James Dolan saying, I trust you guys. You guys are heavily influenced in the basketball world, in the NBA world. And I trust you in building a winner with the Knicks. Now we have to go back to April because we have to discuss what the real message was for the Knicks. Now, throughout the NBA season, Every media rep reporting that Kevin Durant was going to go to the Knicks, it was just a matter of when, not if. And everyone was just saying, oh, the Knicks are doing all this to create cap space. So let's go back, even, even further back, to when the Knicks traded Kristaps Porzingis. Because we need to have a whole discussion about this. So, 
Kristaps Porzingis, of course, was out the entire year with the ACL. Uh, he tore his ACL in the previous season and was out for pretty much a whole year. Uh, there were reports saying that Kristaps Porzingis was unhappy with the Knicks. Most likely because the Knicks had the opportunity at the beginning of this past season that they could have signed him to a max deal. But obviously, with his injury, the Knicks were not comfortable giving him a max deal, especially with the new regime there, because Kristaps was not Scott Perry's pick. Now, he was Steve Mills' pick, but realistically, he was Phil Jackson's pick. And we see this throughout every sport. More than likely, we see it in football and basketball, where a new general manager comes in, a new head coach comes in, and they want to bring in their players. We've seen that with the New York Jets. Every time they get rid of a general manager or head coach, uh, the general manager usually either trades or releases their the players from the previous regime so they can draft, they can sign their guys. Uh, unfortunately, the Knicks fan base was all over Christoph Sprzingis as a hero. Mostly because before he suffered his ACL injury, Kristaps had a 10-point game, a 10, not 10-point game, a, a series of 10 games where he scored 30 points or more. Now that's, that's all-star numbers, that's superstar numbers. Fortunately, he's a big fella, skinny kid, and he got hurt. And the Knicks usually are the type of team to give anyone a max deal, uh, a la Amari Stoudemire. So the Knicks are not comfortable. So that clearly upset Kristaps Porzingis. And then there were reports throughout the season that Kristaps Porzingis was telling other players, other superstars, such as a KD perhaps, not to come to New York. Because the goal, the initial goal, was to get Kristaps Porzingis healthy give him the his last year of his contract to play with the Knicks. And then, after he plays maybe 60 games, hopefully 70 games as a Nick in his last year of his contract, then the Knicks would offer him a max, showing that, okay, Kristaps, he's healthy, he can play a majority of a season, and then he would be owed that max. Unfortunately, Christoph Trzingis was not fond of this. So obviously, he complained and demanded a trade. And thus, the Knicks traded. They practically used Christoph Trzingis as bait to trade Tim Hardaway Jr., Courtney Lee, pretty much all the bad contracts that they had on, book, on the books to the Dallas Mavericks. And, you know, Dallas, they've been in need of a superstar, so understandable. Fast forward to April. Uh, Alan Hahn of MSG interviewed um, Steve Mills and Scott Perry. And pretty much just like a, a typical New Yorker, he says, well, who are we getting free agency? Just tell us we're getting, you guys are getting KD. And they, the message was very clear since April. We're, we're building through the draft. We're going to develop players. And... We're going to use free agency as a tool. They were not going to give max money to anyone else. And then as the season progressed, as the finals progressed, more and more reports came out that the Knicks were only going to offer Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard the max contract. Now we go to free agency and the days leading into free agency. Brooklyn pops up. Preface. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are boys. They're really cool with each other. But when Kyrie Irving chooses Brooklyn, that's his decision. He wants to go to Brooklyn. Kevin Durant suffered his Achilles injury. Okay, now that changes everything. Because Kyrie Irving could have initially wanted to go to Brooklyn on his own. And there were talks of Brooklyn trying to pair him up with D'Angelo Russell. Almost... Form their own kind of Splash Brothers in Brooklyn. And that would have been great. 
sign Kyrie Irving to the max, keep your players, or keep a majority of the players, and then you could have a splash team of your own. With D'Angelo Russell and Kyrie Irving, that would have been pretty interesting. But Kevin Durant's injury changes everything. Because with Kevin Durant's injury, one must assume that prior to the injury, Kevin Durant was convincing Kyrie to go to New York, a.k.a. the Knicks. And now that the injury happened, and Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving were obviously discussing teaming up together, the Knicks very clearly said, we will only offer the max to Kevin Durant. Now, you could say that, oh, well, Kyrie Irving didn't take the max, but he, he took slightly less than max. Let's not blow this out of, out of proportion. He's still got four years, what, 140? 141? So that's a lot of money still. And Brooklyn's going to be without Kevin Durant for the next year. Now, of course, Brooklyn obviously made the playoffs. They went 42-40. and 40, So they had a really good season, thus helping their case to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. But the Knicks are almost like a much younger Brooklyn and a very much younger Boston. So after you hear the reports of the team chemistry dysfunction in Boston throughout this entire season, and the Knicks are hell-bent on keeping their young players, keeping them happy, developing them into superstars or just all-stars, you don't want to give Kyrie Irving that kind of money. And only just because Kevin Durant wants him there. You want Kevin Durant. And if Kevin Durant wanted Kyrie Irving, you would sign him. But not to a max. Brooklyn, on the other hand, signed both of them to huge deals. Slightly less than the max. Only to sign DeAndre Jordan. And DeAndre Jordan, in fact, who played for the Knicks towards the end of the season, was recruiting both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving to go to the Knicks. And quite frankly, this is all Kyrie Irving. You can't blame James Dolan for this. You can't blame the Knicks brass for this. You can't even blame Fizdale for this. This is all Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant's injury. Once Kevin Durant got injured, that changed the whole game. The Knicks were not, were not comfortable giving Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving the max. Now, the case could be made if Kevin Durant had chosen Kemba Walker, then maybe you could. Maybe you could offer them the max. Maybe some other, maybe D'Angelo Russell, once his rights were announced. But, at the end of the day, this was all Kyrie Irving. He is to blame for Kevin Durant going to Brooklyn. Because the Knicks kept to their word. They were not going to give any superstar, any NBA player, not named Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard, a max contract. Let's be clear about that. They did not want to give max dollars to people not named Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard. And that's very smart of them. Now you look at their signings. They signed Julius Randle to a three-year deal with an opt-out after the third year, after the, after the second year. So there's a team option after the second year is done for that third year. Then they signed a bunch of veterans. Taj Gibson, Bobby Portis, Alfred Payton, Wayne Ellington. So now you now the Knicks, because Kevin Durant spurned them, and Kyrie Irving convinced Kevin Durant to not sign with the Knicks. The Knicks used all their cap space and wisely, wisely did not become that team to take on bad contracts just because there is a pick involved. Now People like Bill Simmons will tell you that's stupid. But what they don't know is that they have seven first-round picks in the next five years. Seven first-round picks. Two of them are from Dallas. And the Knicks own their first-round picks for the next five years. So sure, taking on a bad contract like a Goran Dragic with a Miami Heat first-round pick attached would be great. But that only works if the Miami Heat miss the playoffs. And then that, that first-round draft pick of theirs turns into a lottery pick, into a lottery selection. And then you could have maybe the 10th overall pick, maybe the 15th overall pick, or the 12th overall pick, whichever one. 
But it doesn't make sense because now you're taking on bad contracts and that's eating away to your salary cap space. And typically in the past two decades, the Knicks would do that. They would be the third team to take on bad contracts. Sure, a first round pick is involved or a second round pick. But at in the end of the day, does that improve your team? Are you developing your players the right way? Or is Goran Dragic or anyone else just going to demand the minutes and take it away from the young guys? Because where the Knicks are, are at right now, they need Dennis Smith Jr. to play a lot. They need R.J. Barrett to play a majority of the minutes. And you need to remember that Julius Randle is 25 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Julius Randle is 25 years old on a team, probably the youngest team in the NBA. And sure, Brooklyn may have New York's attention right now for the next four years. And sure, Brooklyn is dead last in attendance, dead last in ticket sales. But that's going to change in the next four years. From a basketball point of view, if Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving don't deliver a championship to Brooklyn, then this was a failure. No matter what NBA pundit will tell you that, oh, this is great for Brooklyn. This is going to be amazing. They're building their own dynasty. If they don't win a championship in the duration of time that they were signed with Brooklyn, then it's a failure. And both of them will take a hit. Whereas if they were to go to New York, sure, the attention will be a lot more higher. They will be under the microscope every other day, under scrutiny for every game they lose, under scrutiny for every game-winning shot that's missed, every scrutiny for every first, second, or third round exit, scrutiny for every finals loss. Sure. But with Brooklyn, that takes a bigger hit. Because you spurned a franchise, a legendary franchise in the Knicks, to build something in Brooklyn, and you don't deliver and now that might take a legacy hit. And sure, you want to play with your boys. And sure, winning in Brooklyn would be good for your career, but how how good would it be? With New York, with signing with New York, Kevin Durant had the opportunity to cement his name into the Mount Rushmore. He could have cemented his name as the greats. He could have surpassed LeBron James and winning a championship for a city that would revere him as a god. Brooklyn, now, that's good if you win a championship there, but is it? Is it? And you look at the Knicks. They're signing these guys, but most of them are just one plus one deals, a one-year deal with a team option for the second year. So the Knicks are actually being smart with their money. Because let's say a superstar does not want to be on his team anymore. Let's say a superstar on a playoff team wants to get out, and he's young enough. The Knicks have seven first-round picks. They can maintain the cap flexibility, or they could just sign better players. The Knicks most likely will make the lottery next year, but they won't be a tanking team. The tank was for this year, because obviously... The player every team wanted was Zion Williamson. And Zion Williamson went to New Orleans. Sure, the Knicks got R.J. Barrett, who could have been the number one overall pick. So you got a number one overall pick talent at number three overall. So if you're the Knicks, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. If you're the Knicks, you're surrounding your team with veterans. You're surrounding your team with young players, such as Julius Randle. And if Julius Randle pans out, If Julius Randle pans out and becomes a top player in the league, in the Eastern Conference, let's say, not even the league, just the Eastern Conference, averages around the same average as he had in his last year of the season, the Knicks could re-sign him. And now you have a young tangent of R.J. Barrett, Dennis Smith Jr., Frank Nilakina playing the wing as a wing defender. And I know a lot of Knicks fans were very harsh on Frank Nilakina. I was harsh on him, too. He doesn't have a shot. You know who doesn't else have a shot? Andre Robeson. And sure, Andre Robeson is a better defender, but Frank Nilakina is still young. And at this point, Frank Nilakina is more of a two slash three player. He's more of a wing player, actually, because of his defensive prowess. 
And with more development, with the right coaching, which I believe David Fisdale has the right coaching, Frank Nilakino can develop into a very, very good defensive player, possibly an all-defensive player in the next year or two. And you have Dennis Smith Jr., the player that the Knicks brass outside of Phil Jackson wanted to draft over Frank Nilakino. And now you have both of them. Plus Julius Randle. Plus you have a young Kevin Knox who is still developing. And you sign these veteran players to teach these kids how to play the right way. And Knicks fans need to relax. This is patience. This is how most NBA teams are run. This is how the Golden State Warriors were run before they became the Golden State Warriors. When they first drafted Steph Curry, Mata Ellis was the face of the Warriors. And sure, barely made the playoffs, made the first round exits, second round exits. Didn't really get a taste of the finals. But then they kept drafting. They drafted Draymond Green. They drafted Klay Thompson. They dra- they drafted well. They traded for veterans like Andre Godala. Well, they signed him. But either way, they made moves for these veteran players to develop, help develop these young players. And that's what the Knicks have to do. So I commend the Knicks for de- going, do- going about this the right way and not going back to the old well of just throwing money wherever to whoever wants it. They're signing smart deals. Sure, they'll be competitive. In a weak Eastern Conference, they could even make the 8 or 7 seed. But, at the end of the day, this is all patience. You must be patient with this team. Give them time. You were patient with Mike D'Antoni when he was rebuilding, and they were developing players. Remember, the Knicks drafted Delino Gallinari. They signed these. They signed some veterans, and then when they signed Amari Stoudemire, sure they were a good team. They were good for a six, seven, eight seed. And sure, that's not the result you wanted when you gave Amari Stoudemire hundred million dollars. But you know, that's that's what you get. And now you don't have a player like Amari Stoudemire with weak knees, who will sign who who will sign a five year hundred million dollar deal like they did in twenty ten. And you know, this next for an office is doing right moves, smart moves, that will benefit the New York Knicks in the long run. Now, a quick word from our sponsor. Negotiate with style. Urban, formal, and everything in between. Custom work available from the most creative minds in New York. That's New York City, Westchester, any of the boroughs. All content is for sale. Diplomacy Clothing. Follow them on Instagram. Links are in the description. This is the best urban, formal, and everything in between clothing you can find in the New York area. Diplomacy Clothing. Links are in the description. So let's go back to the New York Knicks real quick. Because this is a very Knicks-heavy first episode. Well, let's compare James Dolan's other team in New York. Remember, James Dolan doesn't own just the New York Knicks. He owns the New York Rangers, who also started their free agency. New York Rangers are also a rebuilding team with a young head coach, with veteran players, but they have a lot of young players. They traded away a lot of their vets. Henrik Lundqvist is practically their only veteran there. But the difference is that the New York Rangers are having the offseason the New York Knicks wished they had. This past offseason, in this first day of free agency for the NHL, the National Hockey League, the Rangers signed Artemi Panarin, the coveted scorer of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And stop me if you've heard this before, he took less than the max. The difference here is that this player wanted to be in New York. He wanted the bright lights of New York City. He wanted to play in the Mecca. He wanted to play in Madison Square Garden. He wanted to wear that blue of the Rangers. So what's the difference? If the New York Rangers can sign top players in the first day of free agency, 
literally the minute free agency began for the National Hockey League. Why did players spurn the Knicks? I know we discussed earlier that it could be Kyrie Irving. But is it really just friends who want to go to one place together? Because if that was the case, then why didn't Kevin Durant, who's clearly the better player than Kyrie Irving, convince Kyrie to take less than the max, take a lesser contract to play with him in New York? Could it be that the bright lights were too much for Kyrie Irving? Because Kevin Durant is no... He, he is not afraid of the bright lights, as seen by him, him choosing to play with the Golden State Warriors. And sure, the media attention, they will be beloved by the Brooklyn media. But, at the end of the day, they would have been revered as gods to the Knicks. And the Knicks media, Knicks brass, if they were to make an Eastern Conference Finals appearance. And they would have done that. But what's the difference? A lot of Knicks fans love to put the blame on James Dolan. But if James Dolan is seeing success with the New York Rangers, who just a couple of years ago made it to the Stanley Cup Finals, who continue to be a consistent free agent destination for players, who consistently make good moves, is it because the Knicks... For the past two decades, under the Isaiah Thomas regime that ended terribly, continue to be connected with mediocrity. And let's not forget the historical aspect that James Dolan has put on the Knicks right now. History has never seen two African Americans hold the position of general manager and president of basketball operations in the NBA, in the history of the NBA. Nor have they seen a trio of a general manager, president of basketball operations, or a head coach run by African Americans. So you have history with the Knicks right now. Not the history of their basketball franchise, but history, social history. An African American run organization, practically. So why don't players want to go there? And sure, the argument can be made. That players like Julius Randle, Taj Gibson, Bobby Portis, Alfred Payton, they wanted to go to New York. Looking at the deals they took, I don't see why they wouldn't. They took less than you would say they were worth. Not a single contract that the Knicks have given out so far this offseason have been of the likes of Tim Hardaway Jr. So then, why would Knicks be spurned by free agents? Now, I spoke about this with a good friend of mine, and I am at the notion that this generation of players that are coming in, guys like Kevin Durant, LeBron James, they grew up seeing the Knicks, sure, they were in the 90s, they were so close yet so far, thanks to Jordan, but they never won a chip. And then you go into 2000s, probably their teenage years, a lot of these young players, and especially these players that are nowhere near old enough to remember the 1973 championship run that the Knicks had. Not enough, not old enough to remember that the Knicks are a historic franchise. That winning there, you were you'd be better you'd be revered as better than Michael Jordan logic or not you'd be revered as better than Michael Jordan if he won in New York Kamala Anthony was the only player in recent memory to acknowledge and welcome the challenge of winning in New York and that there was some success but of course there was a lot more failures and Kamala Anthony has expressed interest in returning with the Knicks to end his career, retire on a retirement tour of of sorts. But at the end of the day, is is Carmel Anthony saying anything positive to his friends? Of course, Chris Paul almost came to the Knicks 
had the Knicks and the Steed Amari Sotomayor. But what's the difference? Why are the Rangers, who are also a rebuilding team, getting these sorts of players to speed up the rebuild, to compete right away? Now, in my opinion, tanking is not the way to go. And I feel like this past season was the last we'll see the Knicks tanking. Because Zion Williamson was a once-in-a-lifetime generational player. Or so he's being, excuse me, or so he's being brought up to be. So what, what gives? You can't play, put the blame on the owner. James Dolan, since hiring Phil Jackson, has been letting them, the people he hires, run the operations. Because he does the same with the Rangers. You would practically never know that James Dolan owns the New York Rangers if you ask hockey fans. Because the Rangers have been consistently a positive team, regardless of the record. This past season, people knew that the Rangers are going to be bad. But they didn't put the blame on James Dolan. They didn't put the blame on anyone else. They said we're, we're a rebuilding team. The front office sent out that message. The Rangers front office sent out the message to the fans. We're rebuilding. We're going to make moves. We're not, we're not going to expect to compete that much this year. And the Knicks front office sent out a similar message. We're rebuilding. We're focusing on developing players. And then you look at their signings from a year ago, and say, okay, Mario Bazzonio, failed draft pick with his original team. Emmanuel Moutier, failed draft pick with his original team. They had Tim Hardaway Jr., who they overpaid for. And that's a mistake that they lived with. And they acknowledged in the trade. And of course, the Joakim Noah situation. If Knicks fans are part of the reason because they didn't sign anyone, remember Joakim Noah, the player who played one year in a five-year deal and then got upset with head coach Hornacek and then decided not to play for the Knicks anymore. Then the Knicks had to amnesty him and cut into their cap space to get rid of him. Would you want someone like that? Would you have preferred that the Knicks sign a Joakim Noah type player who will play for you for a year but only play and show up half-ass the season and the seasons to come in his contract only because you gave him a ton of money because you didn't want to miss out. You had FOMO, fear of missing out on NBA free agents. The Knicks right now have a positive outlook. They have a positive future. And Knicks fans, while Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving spurned you this year. Just stay, stay positive. Don't go to Brooklyn. Sure, you can take the beer of the D train down to Brooklyn. And just hope and pray that you're going to see Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving at the game. we waiting for the 15, 20-minute delay of the B and the D train. And hope that the Barclays Center escalators leading to the stadium aren't too packed. But at the end of the day, this is the Mecca. Don't listen to pundits like Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith, real quick, does not voice the opinion of every Knicks fan. He is an exaggeration of every Knicks fan. Because he is getting older, and he's been, more recently, linked to the mediocrity of the Knicks. Don't listen to pundits like that. If I were Knicks fans, I would stay away from any media reports that negatively bash the Knicks. Because as a, as a TV person, it's easy to bash the Knicks and their decisions. It's easy to say, oh, look at the poor Knicks. They missed out on the free agent again. This franchise is a joke. And sure, it's easy to put blame on James Dolan, because who else? But Knicks fans, remember, 
this is the right way to build a team. This is the right way to build an NBA team. Don't spend your money on random players and use all of your cap space. Don't be a, tr- a third team for a salary dump of a player you have no intentions of keeping. Stay positive. This team is heading in the right direction. Once again, I'd like to thank all you listeners on YouTube. I'd like to thank Diplomacy Clothing for being my sponsor today. I'd like to thank King Hez for the theme to Off the Bench. Please like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. We'll have a lot more Off the Bench coming up. More particularly, next episode, WWE versus AEW. Stay tuned for that. I thank you guys for listening through this 35-minute mess- uh, podcast. And please leave your comments down below. I want to hear your opinions. This has been Off the Bench. Peace out.